viewers so welcome to another session of the pathology or the med uh, this medicine series so today i'll be discussing about pneumonia so actually what is pneumonia pneumonia is particularly the infection of the lung parenchyma and the interstitium of the lung so the lung parenchyma comprises of two things that is the alveoli and the distal airways these two things comprise of the lung parenchyma and the interstitium of the lungs so students one more definition that um, pneumonia is can be commonly looked upon as that it is an acute respiratory illness with radiological pulmonary shadowing so when we look at the radiograph of the patient there is pulmonary that is in the lungs there can occur pulmonary shadowing now looking at the etiology of pneumonia so students out there when talking of the etiology of pneumonia pneumonia mostly occurs at the extremes of ages that is pneumonia can either manifest in very young children or it can occur in very older individuals or the, you know, the most common season for pneumonia is the winter season so this was about the etiology of pneumonia and the chief etiological agent is the microorganism that is the streptococcus pneumoniae moving on to the risk factors the risk factors which cause pneumonia are in the patient, are in the persons who are the, that is the risk factors when talking for the risk factors of pneumonia pe people who are at a very high risk of get, getting into pneumonia or getting manifested with pneumonia is the patients who are smoking who are taking alcoholics that is in alcoholics the patients who are having diabetes mellitus the uh, the persons who are uh, having diabetes mellitus who are alcoholics who are smoking in younger children and in immunocompromised people pneumonia can also be seen so this was about the risk factors the organisms the organisms which are basically responsible for pneumonia are the streptococcus pneumoniae which is mostly the more than 50% cases of pneumonia is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae and the community acquired this was the community acquired pneumonia is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae whereas the pneumonia what is acquired during after an admission into the hospital that is the hospital healthcare associated pneumonia is caused by staphylococcus aureus so students out there today i'll be discussing about the types of pneumonia and looking at as to what are the types of pneumonia particularly so the types of pneumonia can be seen in the form of the community acquired pneumonia so the community acquired pneumonia is the most prevalent and the most common type of pneumonia what is seen and it in more than 50% of the cases are having pneumonia of the community acquired pneumonia category so that is the causative organism over here is the streptococcus pneumoniae and the treatment of it is by beta lactam antibiotics or amoxiclav now moving on to the next type that is the healthcare associated pneumonia so healthcare associated pneumonia is seen in those patients who are admitted to the hospital or who are on ventilatory support so the hospital acquired pneumonia mostly occurs in those patients it occurs mostly after 48 hours if greater than, more than 2 days after admission into the hospital that is after 48 hours if a patient who is administered to the hospital and he is developing pneumonia after 40, 48 hours of admit, being admitted into the hospital then it comes into the category of the healthcare associated pneumonia and this healthcare associated pneumonia is mostly caused by the staphylococcus aureus so again this healthcare associated pneumonia that is hcap can be divided into two categories that is the hospital acquired pneumonia and the ventilator associated pneumonia so the ventilator associated pneumonia mostly occurs after 48 to 72 hours of intubation and after mechanical ventilation and the chief organism the very important mcq what is asked about it is the pseudomonas aeruginosa so this is the causative organism for the ventilator associated pneumonia 
Now, looking at the very important thing is about the root of infection. So the root of infection in case of pneumonia mostly occurs due to the aspiration of the oropharyngeal secretions colonized with pathological microorganisms. So whenever there is a micro aspiration of the pathological microorganisms through oropharyngeal secretions, pneumonia is manifested. It can also occur through aerosol aerosolization that is the droplets of the microorganisms in productive cough or something when that gets inhaled that is the aerosolization process and the hematogenous spread from the distant site can also cause can also be the root of infection so students out there the next important clinical types of ammonia what i'll be discussing today is is about the atypical and the typical pneumonia so students most of the students they are very much confused about what as to what is the typical and the atypical pneumonia so students one thing this thing i have made it easy for you just looking at this these are the terminal alveoli so in the lungs the distal bronchioles are going to give rise to the alveoli and these alveoli if there are the, are the features of atypical pneumonia mostly comprise when there is non-productive cough. So the clinical features what are manifested in patients of pneumonia is particularly fever. That is the patients who are experiencing pneumonia, they can have fever with rigors and chills and they can have both types of coughs. That is the productive cough can be seen as well as the non-productive cough can, see, can be seen. So the atypical, the clinical subtype that is the atypical, in atypical pneumonia, the non-productive cough, cough is present. So this non-productive, the patient keeps on coughing, but there is as such no productive cough. So this non-productive cough can be seen just because the cough is present in the interstitial spaces. Students out there, you can have a look that these, the cough, whatever the droplets of the cough uh, are present, they are present in the interstitial spaces and not into the alveoli. So this is particularly the atypical pneumonia. Moving on to the typical pneumonia. Typical pneumonia also when is seen when the patient is going to cough and there is productive cough in his sputum. So the, when the patient is coughing, there is sputum production and this productive cough can be seen when the in, there is increased secretions in the alveolus. So there, here I have drawn the terminal alveoli and here there is, there is an increase in the amount of secretions what are present in the alveolus. So the, in gram staining, when atypical pneumonia is there, when we go for the laboratory investigations, so during laboratory investigations, when we do the gram staining, as such in atypical pneumonia, if it is there, the patient is cons 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 consistently coughing and he is not having productive cough. So in gram staining, no such organisms are seen. Whereas in case of typical pneumonia, since the increased secretions are there in the alveoli, so when the patient is going to cough, the sputum of him is going to have certain kinds of organisms are seen. So this was the basic difference between typical and atypical pneumonia. In typical pneumonia, there are increased secretions in the alveoli, whereas in atypical pneumonia, the secretions are not present in the alveoli, they are present in the interstitium of the lung parenchyma. So the interstitium of the lung parenchyma is going to have the secretions. Now, the typical organisms in the atypical pneumonia causing organisms include the streptococcus, the staphylococcus, the most common is the pseudomonas klebsiella and the typical pneumonia is mostly caused by different organ organisms including the mycoplasmas, the legionella, chlamydia and viral. So the treatment regimen. So the, uh, the patients who are coming to the OPD, outpatient department, the OPDs in the hospitals, they are whether they are to be admitted into the hospital or whether they are not to be admitted, it is defined by the CURB criteria. That is the CURB, CURB 65. So this is the criteria which is going to decide that whether the patient is going to be admitted into the hospital or not. So this criteria is going to define and if there is one or the two if there is the minimum of two findings here, we, the patient needs to be hospitalized. Now, looking at as to what is the CURB criteria. So the CURB criteria comprises of that, see, if the patient is having confusion, 
U stands for the urea level. That is, if the patient's urea level is increased, that is greater than 20 milligrams per deciliter. So already I have talked about the etiology.